an era in which we are questioning the effectiveness of markets in producing the kind of society and economy we want to live in, it is more important than ever to have an objective debate about the role that markets and the state play in the economy. Is the state necessary only to correct market failures, or is it also needed to more actively shape and create markets and technological opportunities, and to promote growth which is not only smart, but also inclusive? Research we've done shows that countries with bigger income differences between rich and poor do worse on a whole range of measures, uh, in a sense bearing out the intuition that I think people have had for centuries, that inequality is divisive and socially corrosive. So you see a weakening of community life, social corrosion, um, uh, cohesion falls away, people trust each other less, uh, a number of papers showing that. But with that uh, goes also uh, increase in violence, in um, less rapid improvement in, in health, life expectancy, more mental illness, um, more people in prison, uh, lower standards of child well-being, a whole range of problems like this get worse in more unequal societies. Now, <clears throat> I think that people always think, tend to think of inequality in terms of absolute material standards, as if all that matters is if we have enough food and um, uh, warm houses and so on. But uh, now that we have the basic necessities, in, at least in the rich developed countries, uh, I think what matters increasingly, are, or, or what is left uh, as mattering, are the social comparisons. Um, it's interesting, I think, in a whole range of subjects, um, from you know, psychoneuroimmunology and brain scans to evolutionary psychology and animal studies and social epidemiology, uh, behavioral economics, we're discovering how intensely social human beings are. Um, and uh, inequality is really about feelings of superiority and inferiority. And where the people have studied the subjective experience of poverty, you know, whether in really poor countries or in richer countries, it's very much the same. Uh, feeling stigmatized, inadequate, a failure, ashamed of, of not uh, doing better, not being able to provide more for your children. Uh, and so that's what I think inequality is really about. I think there are profound misunderstandings of inequality and the trends in inequality. Uh, really since the end of the 1970s, we've seen an explosion of incomes at the top. Uh, the, the rich have got much richer than the rest of us. They've had much faster rises in incomes. So uh, pay differentials within the, the largest companies uh, that used to be you know, between the CEO and the average production worker or, or low paid workers, um, they were perhaps 25 to 1 or 30 to 1. Uh, by the um, beginning of the, this century, they were more like 300, 400, sometimes even bigger than that to one. Uh, and I think that is, in a sense, an indication of a lack of accountability in democracy. People at the top felt they could do whatever they liked, and they gave themselves these huge pay increases. We must deal with that by making these people more accountable. You know, a number of European countries, but unfortunately not Britain, have legislation uh, requiring uh, employee representatives on remuneration committees and so on. I believe in, in Germany, if a company has more than 2,000 employees, uh, half the members of the remuneration committee have to be employee representatives. Uh, but I think there are other forms of economic democracy I think we need to expand the section of our economy um, with uh, um, cooperatives, employee-owned companies, even employee share ownership schemes are, are, are a beginning, but we must go much further than that. And you know, if you look at those kind of companies or mutuals, they have much smaller pay differentials. The Mondragon companies in, in northern Spain, instead of having two or three hundred to one pay ratios within the company, the two, three, four, five to one. Much, much smaller. You know, you might think your boss should get twice as much as you. You might even vote for five times as much as you. But you don't vote. I think we must also deal uh, uh, with um, uh, tax avoidance um, and tax havens. 
uh, you know, that the rich should not only be getting these huge sums but avoiding tax. Uh, and of course that's part of the reason why um, governments are afraid of raising top tax levels, because they know the rich will just hide their money away. Uh, so we have to deal with, the tox, top, uh, with tax havens and tax avoidance before we can make top tax rates as progressive as they used to be. And, you know, there's uh, a lot of argument and so on about whether you can have a 50% top tax rate. In the United States and Britain in the 60s and 70s, uh, there were 70, 80, 90% top tax rates. Um, and, but you can't do that when the rich can escape tax so easy, easily. So we must reduce income differences before tax, but we must also use the tax system to redistribute.